Usually when I go to places, there are just a lot of people and a lot of kids. They are so excited to go to these places. And they're usually waiting by their bus or they go inside because they're just part of field trips. They're part of a school. Maybe they go in and they take a field trip. So that's why I see a lot of kids. And I also see other adults. Now, adults in San Diego, they usually play games together so that they, they need some entertainment. So when I went inside the zoo, there wasn't that many people that were playing poker inside. And that's because there are too many cheetahs inside of the zoo. It's funny how Robert Downey Jr. was taking care of all these animals in the Zookeeper movie. I think he was doing a really good job of figuring out what he's gonna do to save the princess. If you haven't seen that movie, you should go watch it because it is a really good and funny movie. Now anytime when you talk about zoos, the first thing that pops in my head is the Lion King movie. I don't know why that is, it's just like I associate the zoo with a jungle. And a lot of my childhood memories, they are just from watching a lot of Disney movies, like Hercules, The Lion King, The Little Mermaid. But the one that just reminds me of the zoo is just The Lion King. In other parts of the zoo, there was just so many other animals. Like my impression of the zoo, it reminds me of the movie Jurassic Park. Like if you go inside, you're gonna be thinking to yourself, hey, maybe there are a couple of dinosaurs in this place. Because there was just so many trees. So as I go further to the zoo, I see this big cage and it was in the middle of a field. And I look at it, I look at the cage and I see this guy who was dressed like a fisherman. I'm not sure why that guy was dressed like a fisherman. He was like maybe 55 years old and he was talking to the cage. I'm like, whoa, why is he talking to the cage? What's going on here? I was just letting him do his thing because he seemed like so excited and I didn't want to go in and interfere with what he was doing. So I waited for him to leave. So as he left, I went into the, into the area where he was and then I looked inside. Now there was a couple of birds in there, a couple of parrots, and there was other kinds of birds, like they were separated. But I wondered who was that guy talking to. So then I thought, hey, maybe it's the parrot. So I started talking to the parrot. I go, hey, how you doing? And then the parrot goes, hey, how you doing? I'm like, whoa, that's pretty cool. But then I said a couple of other things to the parrot just so that I can test it out. Now I said a lot of other sentences 
and he repeated every last word that I said to him. Then I was like, wow, this bird really is special. He must be like the most intelligent bird or the most highly trained bird there ever is. Like, I don't know of any other place that they have this kind of setup that's going on with one bird. And I think that they really did a good job training that bird. So when I went in further, I saw a lion that was right on top of a hill. In front of us, there was a cage that was blocking the way. And that lion was just so relaxed. He was just lying there and just waiting and waiting and waiting. He was with a couple of other lions and they looked like they were part of this community where they were just sitting down with a lion. When the lion was sitting down, he looked like he was doing something. And he was just really not in a very good mood and I was wondering why. And I think it has to do because he went and told a story and he wasn't a very good storyteller he has one tail and then that makes sense to me because it is a lion 